Every year, hundreds of millions of stone-coated metal roof panels are produced worldwide. They look as natural as clay tiles, yet inside lies a core of high-strength steel that can last more than half a century. A perfect fusion of engineering and aesthetics. These roofs are made from refined iron ore turned into steel, which is then rolled into thin sheets and coated with an aluminum zinc alloy to prevent corrosion. The surface is finished with protective paint and ceramic-colored basalt granules, creating a material that's both durable and timeless, capable of enduring decades of harsh weather while maintaining its natural beauty. In this video, we'll explore the journey behind stone-coated metal roofing and the advanced technology that unites them into a long-lasting material that protects homes for generations. The journey of a stone-coated metal roof begins with fully alloy-coated steel coils, materials produced in metallurgical plants after cold rolling, aluminum zinc coating, and rigorous quality inspection. Each coil can weigh up to 20 tons and stretch over half a mile in length, tightly wound and sealed with moisture-resistant wrapping. Before leaving the steel mill, the entire surface is coated with a thin layer of protective oil to prevent oxidation during transport. Upon arrival at the roofing factory, the coils are received at the incoming inspection zone. Here, each roll is measured for thickness, coating adhesion, and flatness using precision laser instruments, while electromagnetic sensors verify that the aluminum zinc coating meets the exact composition standards. Any sign of scratches, pitting, or oxidation results in immediate removal from the production line to prevent defects in later coating stages. After inspection, the steel is stored in a climate-controlled warehouse, typically maintained at around 68 degrees Fahrenheit and below 50% humidity. The coils rest on rotating cradles to prevent deformation, with no edges touching the ground. Each one carries a unique QR code, documenting its origin, production date, coating batch, and mechanical properties, ensuring full traceability throughout the product's life cycle. When production begins, the coils are loaded into automatic decoiling machines. A hydraulic lift raises the multi-ton coil onto a rotating shaft, unrolling the strip under electronically controlled tension. The steel passes through a pre-cleaning unit, where a neutral alkaline solution removes the protective oil and fine oxide dust. It is then dried with recirculating hot air to ensure a perfectly clean, dry surface before forming. At this stage, the steel is still only a base material, yet it serves as the backbone of the entire stone-coated metal roof. Every specification, from thickness and tensile strength to coating adhesion, will ultimately determine the roof's resistance to corrosion, heat, and time itself. After passing all quality inspections, the alloy-coated steel coils move to the forming section the first stage where flat material is transformed into the structural shape of a roof. From the coil, the steel strip is unwound and guided through a tension control system that keeps the surface perfectly flat with no edge twisting. Once stabilized, the strip enters a high-power hydraulic press, where thousands of tons of pressure shape the metal into its precise profile. At the heart of this process lies the upper and lower die sets, engineered from hardened alloy steel and polished to tolerances within just a few thousandths of an inch. Each die replicates the contour of a specific roof tile design, from smooth rounded waves to sharp geometric ridges or classic fish scale patterns. When the strip aligns perfectly beneath the press, the die descends with a force of about 200 to 250 tons, plastically deforming the metal and imprinting every groove and ridge in detail. Real-time hydraulic servo controls regulate both pressure and stroke, ensuring flawless accuracy even at microscopic levels. After each press cycle, optical sensors scan the entire surface, measuring wave depth and geometry. Any deviation triggers automatic pressure adjustments for the next stroke. As each sheet leaves the press, it carries a perfectly defined ripple-like contour, its surface taut and strengthened. These ridges and waves are not just decorative, they distribute wind loads, reinforce structural rigidity, and dampen vibrations, 
a design where beauty and engineering work seamlessly together. In the production line of stone-coated metal roofing, the shingle type is formed through a specialized pressing process tailored to its flat, angular design. After the steel strip is uncoiled and leveled, it enters a linear stamping press equipped with hardened groove molds precisely engineered for each shingle profile. These dies, made from heat-treated alloy steel, can withstand more than 150 tons of pressure, enough to create crisp folds and subtle raised edges across the surface. The formed lines not only mimic the look of asphalt shingles, but also enhance the sheet's rigidity, preventing bending under wind pressure or roof load. During pressing, hydraulic servo systems regulate both force and speed to ensure each panel maintains uniform depth and shape. The continuous strip is then cut into standard size sheets and the edges are lightly folded to allow tight, water-resistant interlocking during installation. After shaping, each steel panel is cleaned with compressed air and thoroughly dried to remove protective oil, metallic dust, and moisture. Immediately afterward, millions of ceramic-colored basalt granules are distributed across the surface by an automated spreading system. These stones are kiln-fired at over 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, giving them long-lasting color stability, resistance to fading, and protection against acid rain. The spreader precisely controls coverage, creating a consistent layer of granules across the entire sheet. Once the granules adhere, the panels enter a curing oven heated to around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. There, the polymers soften slightly, locking the stones securely onto the surface. Finally, a transparent protective coating is sprayed over the top, shielding the granules from dust and enhancing resistance to ultraviolet light. By the end of this stage, the steel panel now carries a naturally textured surface, rich color, and exceptional abrasion resistance, ready to become part of a stone-coated metal roof built to endure for decades. The inspection process begins immediately after each roofing panel exits the stone coating oven. The first stage is manual inspection, where technicians examine every sheet under bright lighting to detect even the smallest imperfections, uneven granule coverage, misaligned folds, or streaks in the protective coating. Next comes performance testing, designed to simulate real weather conditions. Selected panels undergo impact tests using free-falling steel balls, high-pressure water spray tests to check waterproofing, and adhesion tests where vibration machines measure how firmly the basalt granules are bonded. Other samples are exposed to continuous UV radiation inside light chambers for hours, assessing color stability and fade resistance. This final step ensures that every stone-coated metal roof can endure years of sunlight, rain, and wind, while preserving the same strength, shape, and color it had on the day it was made. After passing all inspections, the finished panels are automatically stacked into bundles of 10 to 15 sheets, each separated by a protective paper layer to prevent scratches. A hydraulic strapping system compresses and secures each bundle before it's wrapped in moisture-resistant polyethylene film. Every package is labeled with a traceability tag indicating the batch number, production date, color, and roof profile. Before shipping, workers perform a final check to ensure the wrapping is intact, free from tears or dents that could occur during handling. From this point, the stone-coated metal roof panels are ready for delivery, durable, uniform, and built to protect homes for decades to come. To achieve the durable stone-coated roofs we see today, the journey began with iron ore, the raw material that gave birth to steel, the very soul of the entire structure. In vast open pit mines, layers of overburden are stripped away by heavy bulldozers and graters. Once the iron ore seams are exposed, engineers conduct controlled blasting. Each drill hole is precisely calculated using geological software to determine the exact amount of explosives, enough to break the ore from the bedrock without damaging its natural structure. As the dust settles, thousands of tons of raw iron ore emerge along the mine slopes, ready for the next stage of mechanized processing. Massive hydraulic excavators then go to work. Each bucket can lift over 20 tons of ore in a single scoop, 
dumping it directly into giant mining trucks with payloads of up to 250 tons. These trucks move continuously between the pit and the processing station, operating day and night to maintain a steady supply. At the processing site, the ore undergoes primary crushing, where massive steel plates compress and break down the large rock chunks into pieces only a few inches across. This step separates the ore's structure and exposes the iron-bearing minerals inside. Next comes fine grinding, performed inside huge rotating drums filled with thousands of heavy steel balls. As the drums spin, the balls strike and grind the ore repeatedly until it becomes as fine as sand. At this stage, the iron particles are freed from the surrounding rock matrix, setting the stage for metal refinement in the following process. After the iron ore has been ground into fine powder, the material enters a multi-stage refining process to separate the metal content from non-metallic impurities. The first stage is flotation, a method based on differences in density and water affinity between mineral particles. The fine ore is mixed with water in a foaming chemical solution inside large agitation tanks. Air is continuously blown in, forming a frothy layer on the surface. Iron-bearing particles attach to the bubbles due to their water-repelling nature and float to the top, while impurities such as clay, silica, and aluminum oxide sink to the bottom. The iron-rich froth is skimmed off, washed clean, and moved to the next step. The refined concentrate then passes through magnetic separation, where strong magnetic rollers isolate the highly magnetic iron particles. These are pulled tightly against the rollers, while non-magnetic materials like sand and rock are discarded. The ore goes through several separation stages until it reaches a purity level above 60%. In mines with higher impurity content, the process may be repeated up to four times to completely remove manganese, titanium, and other unwanted metals. After being refined through flotation and magnetic separation, the iron ore reaches a high level of purity, yet it remains a fine powder, too light and loose to enter the blast furnace directly. To transform it into a material capable of withstanding intense heat and melting efficiently, the ore must first be shaped into solid pellets. Inside massive rotating drums, the fine ore is blended with bentonite, a clay that binds moisture and enhances cohesion, along with a measured amount of water. As the drum spins, centrifugal force and friction pull the tiny grains together, gradually forming smooth rounded pellets about half an inch across. Their size is deliberate. It allows air and heat to move evenly through the furnace, ensuring a steady burn and minimizing fuel loss. Once the pellets reach the proper density, they're dried with hot air at roughly 750 degrees Fahrenheit removing every trace of moisture before being fed into the firing furnace. There, the temperature climbs beyond 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit, fusing the outer shell into a ceramic-like crust while keeping the inner core porous, a structure that lets hot gases flow freely during smelting, preparing the iron for its next transformation into steel. From the hardened iron ore pellets, the transformation into metal begins. This is the stage where iron is separated from the minerals and turned into molten steel, the core element that gives stone-coated metal, roofing its enduring strength. The dark red pellets are charged into a towering blast furnace, a steel structure rising more than 100 feet high and operating around the clock. During loading, alternating layers of iron ore, coke, and limestone are stacked from the top down. Powerful air blowers inject streams of hot air exceeding 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit through tuyeres near the base, igniting the coke and maintaining a steady internal temperature for hours on end. Under this immense heat, molten iron gradually separates from the impurities and flows to the bottom of the furnace as a glowing river of metal. The lighter slag, formed from limestone and non-metallic elements, floats to the surface and is skimmed off for reuse. Throughout the process, temperature and pressure sensors monitor every reaction inside the furnace, allowing engineers to maintain precise control. When the metal reaches the desired purity, the tap hole is opened, letting the molten steel pour through heat-resistant ceramic channels 
into the refining furnace. Here, metallurgists adjust alloy compositions and remove the remaining impurities to achieve the ideal balance of strength, ductility, and corrosion resistance. From the refining furnace, the liquid steel is cast into water-cooled molds where it solidifies into thick, gleaming slabs. These slabs are then hot-rolled through massive press rollers, gradually reduced in thickness until they become thin steel strips just a fraction of an inch thick. As the temperature drops to about 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit, the steel is cooled by high-pressure water jets and coiled into massive rolls weighing tens of tons. Each roll can stretch over half a mile in length with a smooth, uniform surface, the fundamental material that forms the base of every stone-coated metal roof. From the deep iron ore mines to the gleaming rooftops of modern homes, the journey of a stone-coated metal roof stands as a testament to how technology transforms raw minerals into a material of strength and beauty. Every stage from steel making and rolling to pressing, coating, and embedding ceramic basalt granules reflects a fusion of precision engineering and modern craftsmanship. The result is a product that embodies both natural elegance and long-lasting resilience, capable of enduring decades of sun, wind, and rain. If you'd like to discover more extraordinary journeys of production, where raw materials are reborn into flawless creations, Stay with the Factorin for the next stories to come.